you you ever just play a game that you just like you know it's not perfect or maybe not even good but you can't put it down until you've had your fill that's the kind of game sd gundam battle alliance is it's a game packed with both great gameplay ideas and content but it also kind of has not great at the same time aspects yet this game has been taking up my week and i wouldn't have it any other way Sometimes a game just hits with you, and that's all it needs to do. A few months back when SD Gundam was revealed, it got both an ear perk and a head tilt from Gundam fans. Thanks to its focus on the SD spin-off aesthetic over its normal towering mechs it's known for. Still, as a Gundam fan, I approached this one with a bit of caution. Even after a well-received demo, I had a lot of worries about this game. It's not perfect, so like a parent making a coordinator baby, let's check out the positives and negatives of this newest Gundam title. I played this on the PS5, so the presentation came off pretty well for me personally. It's clean, bright, and filled with satisfying effects. The stages themselves are quite simple though, and I can't deny that. There is some variety in their designs and layouts, but overall they're a bit too simple. Given that the game is also on the Switch, I can't be too mad at it. And the PS5 does add a lot of visual oomph to things in comparison. But it's obvious that this isn't pushing the system in the slightest. The 60 FPS and extra visual flair the PS5 has over the other releases does do a lot, but also the PC or PS5 is my recommended play environment for this game. The music though is something I loved across the board. It features a lot of remix themes and tunes from various series represented in the game. I really love stuff like this. Hearing a remix Tekadem theme really just hits. If you pay the price for the premium sound DLC, you can even get the licensed vocal versions of the original songs. But that's quite expensive for songs you can hear on other platforms for free. Gameplay is maybe where Battle Alliance shines the most, as surprising as that is. Like I said in my demo impressions, I never expected to roll into this game and get a combat system filled with precise timing for blocks, air combos, and combo cancels, but here we are. As someone who loves stuff like this, the general gameplay here is really satisfying and fun at its core. It sides with simplicity in its approach, but it feels good to do a basic attack chain, launcher, jump, attack chain, cancel, attack chain, and finish with a super. It's almost like a fighting game rhythm here, and it's a huge positive in my opinion. Things do get a bit hectic when attacking at the same time with other people, but watching health bars melt, even if someone messes up your combo, feels awesome. Once again though, it's simple on the surface nature hides a lot of nuance in the mechanics. Completing our basic attacks are a variety of sub-weapons highlighting famous attacks from our favorite machines. Blocking can be timed perfectly to reduce damage and to counter strikes. Dashing and ground recovery can be timed for faster recoveries as well. Enemies can be attacked from behind or in the air for extra damage and more. I really do just have to kind of gush about how the game has a lot more to it than you would ever expect at a glance. It's not perfect however. I really like the concept and basic ideas of the combat, but it's a bit too simple in its approach. I would have liked to see the game's basic combos be expanded on. For example, each unit can only do its basic 2 or 3 hit melee attack. There's no upgrade or extra unlockable attacks to your basic button mash chain. It feels like a really big missed opportunity. Also, I honestly feel like the timing windows for the various mechanics are way too tight. Getting the perfect guard down is still tricky 15 hours later, yet when it does go off, it makes the battles way more manageable. It feels like you're meant to do as much as possible, but the mechanics are shockingly difficult to pull off consistently. I didn't have too much trouble getting through the game, but I feel like this could have been loosened up for the better. So what's the point of all this battling of cute, big-headed robots? Well, loot, that's what. Each stage rewards money, upgrades, and the best of all, blueprints. 
Money is used to upgrade your favorite unit stats like HP or damage. And I actually thought the game rolls out the money a bit too slowly for my taste, but a few addictive rounds of multiplayer tended to net me a lot more later in the game. Upgrades are the basic stat boosts. They can have several extra effects, like a uh, 100 HP upgrade would also have a melee damage upgrade for example. It gives you a reason to pick up everything and look at your equipment occasionally, but I didn't find the juicy stuff until quite late in the game. Lastly, blueprints are how you get new units and characters at your disposal. Sometimes you get a new unit outright, but most of the time you'll need to repeat certain stages multiple times to get access to a new unit. Thankfully though, some of these blueprints drop in multiple missions, so you won't need to grind the same exact mission every time for some of these. The random nature of upgrade drops and blueprints being a major reward of each mission make the grind feel pretty rewarding. I'm also glad to say that blueprints only need a handful of drops to complete, and they're not randomized. I think it would have taken a lot of the wind out of my sails if I had to repeat missions for randomized chances at playable units. Speaking of missions, they range a huge swath of the Gundam series Pantheon. From the OG rivalry with Shar to Tekadan's adventures on Mars, most of them are here. There are some noticeable omissions in the series representations for missions, but I think it's fine. Even if they are missing a story mission, there's a good chance of still seeing them being represented with their core Gundam being playable. Not to mention future DLC. Overall though, the mission structure is the same across the board even if the series being represented is different. You go in, smash all the enemies, take down a boss usually, and get loot. They break this up by doing three different formats. Break missions have mixed up units in a world. True missions are the correct version of events. And lastly, there are chaos missions. These are extra missions that feature a surprise enemy unit to do battle with to gain unique blueprints, and overall they're not story related. But you'll want to do them if you want to unlock all the playable units or discover ones you might not even know are in the game. Boss battles are somewhat hit or miss. When fighting another Gundam boss for example, it's quite fun. They fight back well enough and the game's mechanics can be utilized in their full glory. There are also the franchise large enemy mobile armors to fight. These fights tend to be more frustrating than fun. The large enemy combined with really big fast moving attacks sending cameras swinging all over the place can be a bit of a buzzkill sometimes. Especially as you have to whittle away at these really large HP bars. But I can say in multiplayer they become way more fun to burn down with other players. Multiplayer can be done at any time as long as you have the mission available to you. It really does become an addictive way to grind out extra blueprints and money. You don't get a sense of how synergistic the gameplay flow here can be until you join in with other humans and play off of each other's attacks. That said, I do wish there were better options for this mode, but once you get two partners, it really does come alive. The multiplayer also really seems to be the core idea the game was made for. Once again, the flow with other players just makes the game vastly more smooth, efficient, and fun. It's plenty enjoyable without it, but once those two randos drop in and I was able to just sit there for a whole session without doing story progression, just grinding away blueprints and money without a care in the world. Lastly, there's the story, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's one of the most nonsense, uninteresting, and straight up bad stories I've gone through in a really long time. It's kind of the case with games like this that have to think of some nonsense for the characters to be together, but what's here is just terrible. I admittedly checked out super hard on this game's story pretty early on and it didn't do anything to pull me back in. Something about a data world, AI, programmers or something. It being done in an extremely basic, even for visual novel style, didn't help either. There's something like five character faces and three backgrounds for them to work with and you just kind of really feel the game's budget here. Also, a majority of the game's time is spent trying to explain the variety of Gundam worlds and characters in as simple a form as possible, both before a stage and during it. 
with all the chaos going on in game and it all being voiced in Japanese, it's pretty impossible to pay attention to any of it. I'm already quite versed in most of the franchise, so I could ignore it, but I was surprised at how much dialogue there is during missions, and they're all trying to explain the world and characters at a time that I simply cannot pay attention to it. So while the story is basically the worst thing I've experienced in a really long time, I can't stop playing this freaking game. Sometimes a game just hits the perfect aspects of being a game, and that's all it needs to do. And that's exactly what Gundam Battle Alliance does. The gameplay is fun and rewarding to play. It features some of my favorite characters and mechs of all time in their tiny furious glory. The gameplay loop of unlocking and upgrading is simple, but really fun and rewarding. It's not perfect, and to be honest, I don't recommend this as some secret sleeper hit that everyone has to play. But for Gundam fans, and especially those who have a penchant for action games, this is a recommendation for me. I think there's enough here for those looking to get lost in a Gundam themed grind for a few days to make it worth the price of admission. For everyone else, there is a demo, that I did impressions on as well, to check out and see if it gets its tiny little hooks into you like it did for me. But that's all for this review. I was really surprised at how much I dove into this game. I thought this would be something I would blitz through and shelve, but here I am, still playing it. What did you think of the game though? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you waiting for reviews like this one? Let me know down below and be sure to like, sub, and share. Thanks again, and I hope to see you again next time.